secrets locked away from us in a vault never to see the light of day things that we will never know from just watching the edited tv show put in front of us on television deep dark secrets that will blow your mind and having you wish you could erase your brain and forget them forever well i don't work for cbs so i can't get those however the official dvd and blu-ray releases of each season of the amazing race contain quite a lot of secrets plus there are so many more just hiding in plain sight on the internet that you would never know about from just watching the edited television show and that is what this video will be diving into today as some of these secrets are game related some are personal thoughts, some are embarrassing things Phil had to endure along the way, and uh, yes, we will be diving into that famous controversial ending of season 7, where we actually have Euchenna, Joyce, Rob, and Amber all commenting on the episode as it happens. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show aired on television, it is fair game to be considered a secret. While some of these secrets will hone in on a specific season of the show, most will apply to The Amazing Race as a whole. Heads up though, there will be mild spoilers for season 1, and major spoilers for season seven. So with that, I want to thank you for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all of this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. Thank you for your support. And with that, let's count all 29 of these secrets in absolutely no particular order. Number one, this is far more commonplace than you may think happening even as recently as season 31, but in the very first episode of the very first season, the show was already struggling to fit everything within its 42 to 44 minute time slot as that episode contained a roadblock that was never aired, but it has been included on the DVD set for the season. Each team had to cook an ostrich egg, which contains the equivalent of 22 regular eggs and eat it before checking in at the mat. It's pretty gross, lots of teams get sick, and it seems like the teams didn't even have have the right size bowl to cook the ostrich egg in as they break it it just goes everywhere so i'm glad they cut it out of the show <laughs> i'm never eating egg again ever i'm not either Ugh. Ever, ever. Number two, every season it seems like we see first place finishers win great prizes at the end of the leg that they won, like money, trips, etc. I always wondered if they got those prizes when the show was done filming or if they had to wait until it was done airing. Team Fun of season 29 actually was on a local news station where they cleared this up for us. We actually, um, I think a lot of those prizes they don't award till I think after the show concludes. Right. So we actually don't like technically have it yet, mm -hmm. but you know, we're making plans. Number three, do you remember that terrible season of The Amazing Race where teams were families and it was horribly unbalanced and almost the entire race took place inside of the United States? Yeah, I wish I could forget it as well. And I may make a video about it one day, but anyways, not only do we as fans wish they had never done this, but Phil wishes they hadn't done it either, but for different reasons. I wish we hadn't done the family version of Amazing Race, but I'm proud that we tried it, it didn't work, and it came it back to the whole thing, you know, about having kids that you're eliminating. I mean, right, right, right. it's hard enough to eliminate anybody, you know, because they want to be there so badly, and I got to look into the into a kid's eyes with tears pouring down, and like. I'm, you know, with a raised eyebrow, dramatic pause, cameras coming in, and I'm sorry to tell you, you've been eliminated. Number four. And uh, that terrible family season led to some very uncomfortable situations for him as well, especially when promoting the uh, season of the race at schools. We go to Harlem, and I'm doing a school visit, and, oh. and I'm standing on the stage, and I'm thinking, how am I gonna do this? This is 800 uh -huh. kids. And I go, and now, from Amazing Race, family version, please welcome and I just didn't know what else to say with the black family. And then they walked in and the whole, I thought I was going to be killed. And then Mr. Black, thankfully, came up and said, hey, settle down. That's our name. We're black. <laughs> he saved my life. Number five. This next one seems insane since they never show it on the show, but apparently it happens pretty often. I, as a viewer, have always assumed production is one step ahead of these teams and is probably at the next location, at least a flight or two before the rest of the teams are. And as it turns out, that is not the case, as racers from multiple multiple seasons confirm via featurettes and in the commentaries that uh, sometimes they're on the same flight with production. I mean, there were times, like we've talked about a million times, where the producers or whatever were just barely a flight ahead or Phil was running to get to the well, mat we to welcome us. Or, yeah. yeah, We were literally racing the contestants to the next destination. We were racing, we sitting in, right. in traffic and we see him sitting right over there. You look over home. and you're like, oh my God, they're right there. And there'd be times we'd be sitting on the plane, the contestants would be in the back of the plane. We're thinking, how are we gonna get off this plane without them seeing which way 
we're going. We got to the airport. We got on the flight. The flight we got on was delayed. Phil was on the flight with us. Oh, really? Yeah. All the teams to get ahead of us. And he's sitting up there in first class. And I go up there and sit right next to him. And I'm like, <laughs> what's up, man? What are you doing? Number six. Booking a flight has certainly changed over the course of the show's history, especially considering how in season one, apparently you once you booked a flight, that was it. No switching, which is most certainly the opposite in later seasons. That was the hardest part of our season was booking flights and you could only book one and once you did it, you couldn't change it. Number seven, please don't laugh at me too hard if this seems obvious to you, but each team has a camera person, duh, and an audio person. Obviously, I knew about the camera person, how could you not? But I didn't know about there being a separate audio person. And also the camera crew switches teams every leg so that there's no favoritism built up between each crew and each team. I think one of the biggest insights to racing on the race is that each team has a camera and audio guy. And these camera and audio guys have to constantly, if you're running full speed, guess what? They have to be 20 feet ahead of you with a 50 pound camera. And then the audio running guy, ha yeah, running backwards, trying to record you. And the audio guy has his backpack of battery packs and everything, another 40, 50 pounds. And they have to stay ahead of you as well. So they're not in the shot. So I think that's the biggest thing. And each, each leg, the teams for the camera crew gets switched around. So it could just be fair across the board that it's not just one camera crew assigned to yep. one team. Number eight, I would imagine being on the race with limited money would mean spending conservatively to make sure you can pay everyone and not get held up at the finishing line like Uchenna and Joyce did in season seven. But as it turns out, Kevin and Drew in season one were not thinking like this at all as they spent their money in the first leg on their first purchase, by the way, on a baseball weekly right as the race began. And what was the first thing we bought with our travel money besides the cab to the airport baseball <laughs> weekly <Okay. laughs> a dollar fifty on baseball weekly and wow. and because you blew the budget with baseball weekly what did i make you buy a chocolate bar and pepsi number nine bathrooms where do the teams go 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 depends on who you are but when you gotta go you gotta go and drew and kevin in season one just peed in bottles now we can talk about you peeing on the charter plane right yeah. well when wait till comes, we get wait till we comes. get on the plane there's a very good shot of me carrying two bottles of urine <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, 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 no, there wait, it wait, is that's it that's urine two bottles of urine. That's urine if you can rewind that's that so that's two so bottles of urine <laughs> whereas you chen and joyce did their business in bags and just chuck them out the windows. I sure hope no one thought a rain cloud was passing over when the sky was cloudless on that day. We both um, used plastic bags to use a restroom on this trip. Yeah. And oh, tossed them out the window. Oh, <laughs> no way. Yeah. is like, this, we're, he goes, we're not stopping. I go, I gotta go, go to the bathroom. bathroom. I had to go. Number 10. The Amazing Race isn't super clear on how long a season lasts. Survivor is super clear, 39 days, pretty much always except for one season. Big Brother, they do vary from season to season, but the torture of that season varies between 85 to 99 days as of the recent seasons. For The Amazing Race, it is much shorter than that, but they never ever say it on the show. Yeah, so it's 12, 12 shows in 21 days. And Which a lot of people don't realize is, and it's nuts. Number 11. This all ties into that revelation that teams have an audio person along with the camera guy, but when each team books their flights for any flight, they have to get four seats. And this probably explains why flights seem to fill up so fast when teams book them. When the teams book their flights, they're booking for four people. You know, there has to be room for four people to go on to the to the flight. Number 12. While I am not 100% sure which season it started on, I want to say in season 25, but don't hold me to that if it was earlier. Phil starts updating us live as to what people's positions are and what tasks they are doing as they are in the background running them. As it turns out, this speeds up production instead of slowing them down like you may think it would. One of the reasons that I started doing those live updates that I do, I was always just trying to stay ahead of the teams to explain the challenges, so I had to go everywhere they went. A lot of times the teams would turn up and then I would have to get out, you know, get out of the way. So I was like so frustrated that I was missing, you know, a lot of explaining to the audience that I just said, all right, just roll with the team running through and I'll just say, you know, Ernie and Cindy are the first to arrive at this detour and what they have to do is X, Y, and Z. Number 13, what is the longest time Phil has ever had to stand on a mat and wait for a team? I've always wanted to know this. Well, the record happened in season 11 when he was waiting on team Guido and I will let him tell you how long that was. The record was season 11 when I waited for the Guidos for 19 hours, I was at the pit stop outside in the snow. You don't so get to like go into a warm tent the, or van or? There was, no, there was no respite. The only respite you got from the sun was, a, was an umbrella. And we were out there for about 12 hours. So you get cooked. And um, there have been times where I'm still waiting for 
the last team to come in and the first team has gone on the next leg. Number 14. As you may recall in season one, the teams all checked into a cool deserty pit stop at the end of episode five, but due to a sandstorm had to relocate. Now due to this relocation, the pit stop ended up lasting 36 hours instead of the standard 12. Because there was a sandstorm on its way and too. We, yeah. that's, we were actually moved out of the pit stop earlier than we were supposed to because yeah, of the right. weather concerns. Yeah, they actually mm -hmm. came from literally the opposite direction from mm -hmm. where the camel roadblock was. Number 15. You would sure hope teams wouldn't experience issues in other countries due to their race or sex, but it inevitably does happen. No one's perfect. And it especially was the case for Nancy and Emily as they were in the country of Tunisia. I remember they had a hard time because it was two women traveling on. They had a hard time getting a cab that morning because uh, yeah, they, everyone kept laughing at them because they were all by themselves. And they just kept passing them by? Right, yeah. yeah. And I never heard so that. So watch, yeah. watch what's happening right here. They keep pointing him someplace yeah, else. They, yeah, yeah they, they wouldn't accept two women traveling, yeah, especially right. in the middle of the night. Number 16, Team Guido is evil. Okay, that's not a secret. If you've seen season one, you should already know this. But back in season one, they tried talking production into giving Robin Brennan, another team obviously, a penalty. And it seemed to be going that way, like it was actually going to happen because uh, they brought it up. But Robin Brennan talked their way out of the penalty. That and then five. we tried to get you a penalty for uh, trading things down. Trading Dude, you tried to get us. Right. <laughs> you, you tried to get us kicked off the show before it even started. <laughs> <laughs> this phantom <laughs> phone call at the <laughs> casting <laughs> production that studio. You, are, you argued your way out of oh, the penalty. I, I argued my way. <laughs> Up very well. God. I came up with a very good explanation. You can't uh -huh. Number 17. Unlike with Survivor, teams can talk to each other before the race begins. In fact, it's encouraged that they do this. And when doing their photo shoots before season one aired, and when doing their photo shoots before season one even started filming, Pat and Brenda asked Team Guido a question, and uh, yeah, Team Guido was already up to being evil. And yeah. when we had the publicity photos, Pat and Brenda were right behind us and said, Well, if you're Team Guido, who are we? And I looked at her and says, no, you're nobody. You're going to get eliminated. <laughs> she was not Actually, all right. happy. Number 18. Season one was no joke. While teams were bickering and fighting at customs at the airport in episode six, the guards felt it was necessary to pull out their assault rifles on the teams to calm them down. That's how out of hand it was getting. You know, we always talk about the uh, the cops, actually, that had M16s. <laughs> yeah. It scared us a little bit. We were ready to get... Yeah, and Jared or someone came in and... All right, yeah, yeah. So had to explain everything once, to I, him. once again, I bring it up. This is when Kevin, Nancy, and I are doing all the work on right. my own, and these guys well, are running off winning the them. race in the sixth <laughs> leg while I'm talking. Number 19. The locations are scouted in person ahead of time. Duh. Everyone probably could figure that out. However, the scouts use the same means of travel as the contestants do to, of course, see how it'll all work when they have them do it. And this process takes over a month to do. Well, what we do is we travel, we travel around. I mean, we scout these locations. The, the first race, I went to every single country. It took me over a month. By scouting, the time, we went scouting. We went scouting. I went around the world from country to country and went to all the places that I had been to before and where I had been filming before and where I saw certain things that I thought were original that were not necessarily shot, necessarily shot in other shows. Yeah, scouting the Taj Mahal, Bert and I, were take, we took that train, we took all the same ways of transportation the contestants took. Number 20. Unlike on other reality shows, even Survivor, everything with the teams is done in one take. There are no reshoots and no recreations like on other shows. If something is missed, it's missed. People in the beginning did not really understand that this was a race and we don't reshoot anything. It's shot once. If they go to that clue box and and they get a clue, they're gone. We're not gonna say, oh, can you go back and open it again? I missed it. You know, the cameraman cannot miss the shot. If he if he does, he's gotta keep going. I tell him, I said, this is the Daytona 500. We don't stop. Number 21. Everyone on season seven was wondering why the taxi drivers in India always needed to go get gas when driving them to places. They're in a race, they don't have time to get gas. Well, Boston Rob suspects that the taxi drivers in India don't fill up their tanks all the way because people steal gas from their tanks there. And you know what? That does sound pretty plausible. In India, I think every taxi driver was constantly running out of gas <laughs> because oh, yeah. they only put enough gas in the tank to get that to they where can get going. to where they're going because they don't want to leave a full tank of gas because they will steal the gas out of the tank. Uh -huh. oh, really? That's why yeah. they always keep the tanks on empty. Number 22, if you have ever wanted a winner's advice on whether to worry about what the other teams are doing while racing, Uchenna's advice for The Amazing Race is to just do your own thing and don't worry about what everyone else is doing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was all that race That was the long. whole race. Don't worry yeah. about us. Worry exactly. about yourself. Do your own thing. And that's, if you can give advice to anybody, it's do your thing. It's a lesson in life, Hank. 
That's true. That's a lesson in life. Don't be like the Joneses. Number 23. Remember when you, Chen and Joyce got that flat tire in the final episode of the season? It was intense. <laughs> Remember Boston Rob and Amber also got pulled over by the cops. Well, Boston Rob's taxi driver noticed you, Chen and Joyce's tire was getting low and tried to call their taxi driver to warn him, but Rob stopped him from doing this. Oh, see? Look at that. Oh yeah, we saw it. We were watching that tire for a long time. Our driver tried to call you guys to tell you it was getting low and I grabbed the phone. I was like, you're Don't not telling him that. Tell him. <laughs> oh man, that's that cold blooded. That is cold. Yeah. Number 24, it is time. Euchenna and Joyce pull a rabbit out of their hat and get on a plane they really had no right to get on. So what happened? What do they and Boston Rob say in the commentary when the event takes place? Well, the commentary goes strangely quiet once it comes to Euchenna and Joyce getting on that flight at the last second, despite all the talking we hear before this event takes place and after this event takes place. Here's the moment when it goes quiet. I was spending the money oh, right we were, there. We had the money. I was spending, spending money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. We see, were talking about what we we're going to give to our families. Point, please. Please. Right now. Oh, we been through. Oh, no, well, look, they're moving it, maybe. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Sweet. So let the conspiracy theories continue. We probably will never really know for a fact if there was any production interference or not. Number 25. Upon arriving in the US on the last leg in season seven, Boston Rob and Amber actually had a seven minute head start due in part because Rob asked the plane to slow down Uchenna and Joyce before they got off, which he had done pretty much all season. But here it actually wasn't shown and I don't know why because this would have been another evil thing to do right before he lost the game. At this point, you guys got out seven minutes ahead of us. We were watching. When you guys went out the door, we were just like counting the we seconds. We could not get off that plane. Did you guys tell those people that were in front of us not to let us off? Yeah. Oh, yeah, did, we did. Yeah. We yeah. They, were so they were so mean to us on that flight, they trying to get off. No. They would not let us pass. We told them, we said, there's another competing team on this flight. Don't let them get they off. They were not letting us yeah. off. They knew we who were you were, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. They showed them who you were. We uh, can tell. Number 26, right before winning the $1 million, Yuchenna tells the taxi driver that he will send him a thank you letter for letting them go without paying the whole bill he owed them. Well, as it turns out, he never sent the thank you letter, and at the time of the recording of this commentary, he says he's gonna bring it in person. This is 2005, so I am not sure if that ever happened or not. Okay, we'll send you a thank you, sir. We, we will send you a thank you. You ever send it? <laughs> no, we're gonna take it in person. We're, we're taking it in person. Him. Number 27, we don't really see contestants singing unless it's part of a challenge. Then again, who has time to sing when all what we're seeing is drama and the go, go, go of the race. We don't really see the downtime. But as it turns out in season one, Brennan sings the sun will come out tomorrow in his smart car, which had the cameraman busting up and laughing. Uh, one other little story on this one. I'm driving along and it's kind of boring. I'm on a straight road. I'm not lost at this point. I'm yeah. thinking, what would I be doing if I was driving in America? I thought I'd be singing along <laughs> with my radio at home. So I bust out into <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> And the funny thing is, is my, my cameraman I could see was laughing and the camera was actually shaking on his shoulder. Number 28. How far away is the place the players get to rest at from the check-in mat? I always actually wonder this. As it turns out, not always as close as one may think and hope. For example, in season one, episode six, the resting place was a solid hour from the check-in mat. It was it was like a hotel, but where was the hotel? It was about an hour's drive. Yeah, it was a long yeah. way from yeah, the yeah, they it was hauled a us long away. Ways, and our yeah. cab got lost. Yeah, so we got like, lost. We got an hour and yeah, a half yeah, drive. Yeah. It was a long drive. Number 29. Apparently because Drew came after the Guidos so aggressively in season one, you see the event happen in the show, everyone was stopped by production and received a lecture about physical and verbal violence. Add on the guards with their assault rifles, and this was a crazy crazy first season of the show. We were scared. Right, we yeah. were scared. They don't show that he had to apologize to Bill on camera. Yeah, in India, he, all the teams were given lectures about physical and uh, verbal violence. So which secret blew your mind the most? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes this channel possible. So thank you, and thank you for watching.